Hey guys, thanks for watching Prep Football Tonight, sponsored by National Scouting Report. We are winding down yet another season of Prep Football here at Tubetown. Just three weeks left on the schedule. This week we are back in Tennessee when Brighton hosts Southwind out of Memphis. We'll talk more about this game in just a moment. Last week we had a huge 6A matchup when the undefeated West Memphis Blue Devils came to Jonesboro. West Memphis jumped out early and held a 19 to nothing lead heading into the halftime break. A very banged up Hurricane squad regrouped at half and would give West Memphis a fight in the second half of the game. But in the end, they couldn't overcome the injuries or G. Holmes. Holmes had 35 carries for 240 yards and a score. West Memphis moves to 7-0 and will look to stay undefeated when they host Jacksonville this week. And it doesn't get any easier for Jonesboro for that matter. They travel to Searcy to take on the 5-2 Lions. The Tubetown Rivalry Series is returning to Tennessee this week and stepping right into the middle of a four-way battle for first place in the 5A8. Montford, Brighton, Ridgeway, and Southwind are all 4-1. So this Brighton-Southwind game is huge in the conference with just one game left to go after this week. Now, Brighton has scored the most points in conference play with 238, but Southwind's defense has been the stingiest in conference play by far, allowing only 57 points through five games. The Southwind Jaguars are led by senior quarterback Cortarius Wilson, who can throw on the run and scramble when needed. He has a great pair of sophomore running backs in Joffrey Williams and Steve Guy to lean on. It also doesn't hurt when you have guys on the line like Christian Williams at 6'3", 275 pounds, pushing people who are out of the way. Dreshard Wilkins is also a big physical presence on that line as well. So I have a feeling a lot of their success on defense is predicated on a big physical line with guys like Williams and Wilkins. Now the last time we saw Brighton, they dropped their contest at a very good, now 7-1 Covington team. They dropped that contest 26-0. After that, they rolled off three straight conference wins over Kirby, Overton, and Kingsbury. Their only conference loss so far has come at the hands of Ridgeway. Coach Jacobs' team relies on speed. They will need to get around that Southwind front and make plays on the outside this week. The Cardinals are going to need a solid performance from their line to help out senior quarterback Malik Jackson and his senior running mates Lance West and Aaron Alston. We'll know a whole lot more about the 5A8 after this Friday night. Now it's time to check in with Larry Perrin of National Scouting Report. Now we were just barely able to catch up with Larry this week as National Scouting Report is having fall meetings. Not to mention this is one of the busiest times of the year when it comes to football recruiting. We opened up with Larry talking about the, how busy everything is this time of the year with National Scouting Report. Now let's take a look inside at Football Scouting Combine hosted by NSR. Then hear from Larry on the backside. Roll the footage. Now guess what? Y'all are fixing to find out what energy is all about. I am a firm believer in weight training, strength and conditioning, and improving yourself physically and setting yourself apart from the rest of the world. You can be a good athlete or you can be an elite athlete. And it is a mindset. It is a lifestyle. The ones that set themselves apart are the ones who are willing to sacrifice and dedicate their lives to this goal. My grades don't matter. If they want me, they'll come get me. My grades don't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in. Don't you believe that? This coach is going to look at you and say, hey, can, we're going to look at his film. We're going to see if he can play at our level. If he's a linebacker, we're going to see if he feels downhill, okay? If he hits with his eyes up, he shoots his hands. If he's an offensive lineman, can he step, okay? 
Does he use his hands good? Got good hips, flexibility. Does he reload his hips? Okay, if he's a defensive back, does he open up in the coverage? Does he run the alley? Does he hit like a freight train? If he's a wide receiver, soft hands, good hands. Gets open. Second level gear, if he's a running back, great vision. Sees the hole, hits the hole. Gets north and south. If he's a quarterback, throws in tight window. Throws the great deep ball. Throws a good out route, deep out route. Has every throw. Big arm, smart. Doesn't make mistakes. Protects the ball. Wins game. These are the evaluations you get. If you want to go to the Division I level, that's only one and a half percent of a hundred people. If you want to go to the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, the Pac-12, or the ACC, the big conferences, that's a half a percent. That's rare air. National Scouting Report is the nation's oldest and most respected scouting organization in the world. We've been doing this since 1980. We started this. I'm one of y'all. I'm one of y'all. I was y'all's age wanting to go play college football. And that's what I do, I help get you there. Our scouts all across the country are, are, are getting these kids uh, opportunities through visits, through uh, uh, personal conversations with college coaches and trying to get these kids, especially the senior classes, uh, solidified on offers and, and, and get finding them home. And uh, it's that time of year where the schools can really showcase themselves by having these kids over on a game day visit. Uh, game day visits are huge for establishing relationships with staffs, meeting the staffs, meeting the coaches, meeting the players. But also seeing the campus and seeing seeing the, the environment that these kids are, are considering uh, uh, making their home. And uh, so, you know, that's that's really what we're trying to do now is get these kids some game day visits uh, to, to schools that they have interest in, in and schools that are interested in them as well. Um, we we're still recruiting and still are still scouting and evaluating kids all across the country. You know, my, my weekends have been the last few down here in Alabama. Uh, it's at, at some games and events and, and talking with, with, with people. Um, you know, we're, we're going to Texas this weekend to look at some kids. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a busy time of year. And then, then we'll start to transition more into the signing day end of it and getting these kids finalized on, uh, who's interested in, in trying to get them locked down and get this 2018 class uh, completed. And, and, you know, we're going to have to deal with an early signing period in football this year, something we've never had to deal with before. So uh, with that new December uh, signing period coming uh, in, it kind of compresses things down a little bit uh, on finalizing some of these, these situations for these athletes. Uh, uh, but, again, they'll have the standard uh, signing period also uh, in February like they always do. Um, we will transition into conventions season, which will start up at the end of, you know, during December and, and go into January where we go out to conventions and we actually are with college coaches face to face, uh, uh, meeting and talking to them about what their needs are, what we can do to better service them and take care of, take care of that end of the, the business, uh, but then it's uh, it's all about working with our athletes, uh, and, and and there's a lot of conversations this time of year with the families of the, the kids that we've got enrolled. There's a lot of conversations with families that we're trying to get the kids enrolled, and uh, it's just a a lot of energy happening in the fall here with the National Scouting Report, and it's all across the country. Parents and coaches, if you have a kid that wants to play at the collegiate level, contact Larry by email or the number on the screen. Now let's get Larry's take on some of the area scores from this past Friday night. The 5A East has, has for many years, uh, been decided with the Batesville and Wynn matchup. Uh, and, and this year, you know, it's, it's just been, everybody's been talking about Wynn. Everybody's kind of overlooked Batesville a little bit. And uh, guess what? Coach King and those guys uh, uh, gave brought us all back to reality last Friday night with the big win over over previously undefeated win. 
And uh, that's just how the, the, these, the, these teams are in this conference. Batesville is uh, – they are a strong, well-coached, solid football team. They've got some of the best coaches on staff you're ever going to see. And uh, they, they've got good athletes. They may not be as loaded this year as they have been traditionally. But uh, that staff – uh, knows how to win ball games, and and uh, you know they certainly came through on that. And and nothing against Win. Win's still a phenomenal ball team, and and they're playing good football. And I'm sure they'll rebound. Something else in the 5A East is kind of kind of the rumblings are is is again, and I've mentioned this just about every week is Nettleton and Valley View and what they're doing over there. They continue to win. They continue to to. Uh, set themselves up for a good seed in the playoffs. You know, they're wanting to get home games in the playoffs and, and stay at home as long as possible. Uh, you know, and, and and these two teams have traditionally not been uh, some of your major players in the 5A East recently. Uh, of course, Valley View is new to that conference, relatively new. Uh, but they're having a wonderful year. Uh, Coach Cochran and that bunch over there are just uh, uh, really doing a great job uh, uh, of getting these kids to believe that they can win. And it's, they've changed the culture over there a little bit. You know, I mean, Valley View comes in and beats Blyville. Blyville's traditionally one of your top teams in the 5A East. And uh, so they, they they came in and handled them pretty well. So uh, the, the playoff seating is starting to shake out pretty good in the 5A East. And it, again, it looks like win, Batesville, Valley View, Nettleton, uh, and on down the line. Um, in the 3-4-A over in Arkansas, you, you're starting to see how things are shaking out there as well. Uh, Truman, of course, they keep rolling. Uh, they rebounded after the loss to Gosnell and went down to Harrisburg and took care of business there. Uh, uh, Gosnell keeps on, on rolling. Uh, uh, you know, they had a, a very uh, handily hand, uh, win over uh, Highland this past week, and uh, they're looking good moving into the next game. Uh, you know, Gosnell started out real slow in the non-conference, but Coach Barbary and them scheduled that way on purpose. It's, it's kind of the, the Kelly Chandler and, 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 and his, his philosophy. You know, you play hard non-conference, it'll prepare you for the conference uh, to, to come up, and then you'll be peaking at the time of the playoffs. So Gosnell's kind of followed that, that philosophy, and it's starting to work pretty good. Another team out of that conference that's playing good football right now is Westside. You know, Westside defeated a very talented Brooklyn team last week, and uh, uh, so they're, they're, they're starting to see the playoffs and see where they can uh, potentially line up in the playoffs. Uh, you know, you go into the 3A over here, you know, you're looking at Piggott. Piggott's playing strong football right now. They're, they, they are, uh, they're putting a lot of points on the board. Coach Harrell and those guys are, are, are really uh, uh, moving the ball well right now, and and uh, looks like the only thing to stop Piggott is Piggott. Um, but then you got your traditional powers, uh, some that have fallen off the last couple of years, but they're back, and that's Rivercrest and Osceola. Uh, that sets up for the final game of the season, as always, could possibly – be for the conference championship and in, in that number one seed. Now that the regular season is winding down, we can see the playoff picture starting to unfold every week. Larry talks about the schools that are looking to make a deep run in the playoffs this year. Roll it. Back to the 5A East, you know, the, 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 the teams that are the three and the four seed there uh, in that coming out of that, you know, which could be uh, Valley View, could be Nettleton, could be Batesville. You know, uh, people are not going to want to play them. They're not going to want to play them. And I think that lower seed coming out of the 5A East is really going to have a, a really good track to, to make a run uh, in the playoffs. Um, you know, Gosnell and Truman, they're going to be high seeds uh, if everything goes as planned, and uh, they'll have some home field games. And, and uh, I, I think, like I said before, Coach Barbary and Gosnell are peaking right now. They're, they're, they're starting to play good ball. Again, Truman – Truman is just a, a juggernaut, and 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 if they get the right team uh, that has to travel a long ways, they're gonna they're gonna pound them pretty good and put a lot of points up, and uh, they're they're trouble. Here's a, here's here's something that's traditionally tr true in the playoffs. Uh, these teams that run the double wing, uh, when you get in the playoffs and you can control the ball and control the line of scrimmage and pound on people, especially if they're traveling. Uh, you can you can you can pretty much control the game, so that that's going to be to to Gosnell and Truman uh, both advantage. Uh, West side, 
you know, West Side is, is 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 if they have to travel at the three or four seed, they're gonna they're gonna go make some noise over there. Uh, here's the deal though: Rivercrest and Osceola, they're playing good football. Win or lose, coming out of that final game, uh, probably both are gonna have a home field game. And uh, it, it, and you get Kelly Chandler in the playoffs, and uh, his teams are always ready to go by the time playoffs get here. You know, all the teams I see in the, in the, in the, in the region uh, that, that had the opportunity to go the furthest, you know, you just can't count out Coach Chandler and the Rivercrest Colts. Uh, Osceola is, is spreading the ball around now. They've got some new energy, some new life. So if somebody has to travel to Osceola, they could have their hands full as well. And lastly, we talked to Larry about this huge 5A8 matchup between Southwind and Brighton, a game in which home playoff game hangs in the balance. Speaking of playoffs, we want to talk about the, the game this week with Brighton and Southwind. You know, that, that, that 5A8 over in West Tennessee is extremely competitive this year. You know, Brighton and Southwind come in with uh, identical 4-1 and one records. Uh, Mumford is 4-1 and one in that conference as well. So, and, and the winner of this Brighton-Southwind game gets to, to, to kind of have the, the, the jump. You know, of course, Mumford's going to keep on playing, and Mumford and Brighton play the final game of the season. Uh, if Brighton wins this week, that's going to set up a, a showdown. And, uh, you know, and, and so a lot of things are happening right now. The seating in the playoffs right now, everybody's jockeying for that home field. Uh, to, to get a home playoff game because, uh, you know, you, you want people to travel and you want to, you don't want to be traveling in the playoffs and, and, uh, playoffs traditionally, the home field has a, a huge advantage, uh, with the time of the year that you're playing and that sort of thing. And the kids are tired and, and, you know, you have to take a six hour bus ride somewhere that's going to wear on you. So if you can sleep in your own bed at night and you can get up and go play on your home field in front of your home fans, that's a huge advantage. As usual, we have a big thank you going out to Larry Perrin and National Scouting Report for being a sponsor all year long for prep football tonight. Those guys are great to work with. For the third year in a row. Third year in a row. Three. One, two, three. <laughs> so last week's game, we didn't really touch on that. Uh, we actually did. We missed the highlight package this week, so sorry we apologize for the highlight package. The game will be up on YouTube, though, so you can go back and watch the entire game. But uh, we thought it was going to be a big game. Well, it was a big game, but right. I wasn't aware that Jonesboro was walking in such a uh, handicap like they were. Uh, mentioned uh, Jamarcus Bibbs on the pregame show last week. He did not play. Right. They were down to only one quarterback when they had been running the two quarterbacks back system, uh, A.J. Acock was only uh, running back. So it was basically A.J. Acock and Daniel Johnson so, show uh, along with the, the tight end too. Right. Uh, Slayton, Slayton, yeah. I believe. So, uh, and you know, that was a lot of their offensive production lost when Bibbs went down and a few other guys, <laughs> a quarterback, a starting quarterback. Right. So they weren't really quite ready to take on that challenge of West Memphis. No, Jonesboro was kind of the walking wounded coming into this game, even more so than we knew. Uh, we, we didn't realize that uh, Bibbs was not going to play, and that was a huge impact on the Jonesboro offense right off the bat. You lose somebody with that kind of production. Uh, West Memphis was going to be an uphill battle for Jonesboro anyway, but then you take Bibbs out of the mix, in addition to the other injuries they have on both sides of the ball, actually. And it's just a, a, a huge uphill battle for them. And, uh, you know, West Memphis, you have to tip your hat to them because they went in and took care of business. Yeah, uh, G. Holmes. G. Holmes, <laughs> G. Holmes man. Uh, really took care of business. It seems like the two games that we've done at Jonesboro, they had running, opposing running backs just yeah. go off them. The Catholic running back did. Yeah. And then G. Holmes uh, from West Memphis. So, But I can tell you this, I know Jonesboro is going to be looking forward to that matchup next year. They really owe West Memphis now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's two in a row, so maybe third time will be the charm for uh, the Hurricane. So this week's matchup, um, it's actually it's Southwind. Um, Southwind is going to be at Brighton. Right. Okay. Uh, so, but this is a cream of the crop of your 5A8. There's four four and one teams at the top of this conference, uh, and this is our last trip to Tennessee right. this year. So I think it's a big way to go out of the Tennessee schedule because you're basically going to know a lot about that 5A8 after Friday night. Who's going to step up? Who's going to take a step back? Well, as we mentioned earlier, this you know there's a home game in the playoffs on the line with this game. Uh, you've got that uh, roadblock there of four teams at four and one. 
and tied for the second place. I mean, it's just uh, – there's a lot can, that can come out of this one game this Friday night. So, even though we had to call a little bit of an audible with our schedule, uh, we had we had our uh, miscommunication. We thought this was going to be the Munford-Brighton game. However, this game is just going to be just as important because Southwind and Munford, both of those teams that are tied in that in that uh, traffic jam there at 4-1 and one in second place in the conference. So, still got a great matchup. Uh, I believe Munford is going to be hosting Kirby – uh, Friday night, so that'll be another great game as well. But uh, Brighton, Southwind, you know, we've we've not seen Southwind yet. That's so. what I was going to mention. Another two town first. We have not seen Southwind out of Memphis, and they've been right up there at the top of the standings the last few years. Uh, and so this should be a battle. Uh, we wish we could be at the Mumford Brighton game next week, but next week's game is another huge rivalry right here in Northeast Arkansas uh, when Valley View goes to Nettleton. And this year, that game is bigger than it's been uh, possibly Recent ever. Memory, yeah. Yeah, uh, Nettleton's sitting atop the 5A East right now, undefeated. They got that big goose egg in the right-hand column, which is what you want. Uh, Valley View, I think, has surprised a few people this year with the way they've played. Uh, when we get to that game, one guy you got to watch out for with Valley View is Ryder Snell. Ryder has been, uh, you know, kicking butt and taking names in the running game for Valley View. So that'll be interesting to see how he matches up with all the athletes that Nettleton has, you know, on offense and defense. But, I mean, they've both got another game this week to get to that one next week. But it should be a really good matchup again next week. Crosstown Showdown never disappoints. And I got a question. When's the last time Valley View and Nettleton both beat Blyville in a given season? Wow. That, I, you know, maybe we can refer back to Larry we'll for that one. We'll have to get one, Larry's so, take on that. Yeah. Uh, that's what I've been keeping my eye on and that was the game last week Valley View did beat Blyville as Nettleton went down to Blyville and beat them earlier this year so Blyville's a little bit down this year but uh, that'd be an interesting fact to know we may have to do some deep research and dig deep to find that out yeah throw that in the Google machine see what comes up when's the last time Valley View and Nettleton beat Blyville in football in a given year so uh, but huge matchup this week and we're gonna do something a little bit new this week yep we, uh, we've been putting every game, in addition to it being on TubeTown Channel 11 in Tennessee and Channel 21 in Northeast Arkansas, we've been doing YouTube Live. We're going to change things up just a little bit. We're going to go Facebook Live this week. So check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TubeTown Online. Uh, it'll be right there, front and center, can't miss it. We're going to try that out just to see how it works this week. And who knows, we may end up going uh, YouTube and Facebook going forward. We've got some new equipment we want to try out. And why not give it a shot? Everybody's got Facebook. Um, there you and go. So, and we encourage people, even if you're at the game, pull up the feed anyway. Watch it. You can see instant replay. So if you had a questionable call that you thought was a little bit questionable, you need to have that TubeTown feed pulled up so you can see whether or not it was for sure a questionable call because we'll you let go. you know. There you go. We can't, you know, we can't show replay in the stadium uh, on the big you know, video board, but we can. Nobody says you can't watch it on your phone. <laughs> You're welcome, officials. <laughs> uh, but also, other big things going on with TubeTown. We got basketball coming up real rapidly. Real this is our week eight in football, so just two more games after this week. But basketball is rolling up, and we're doing basketball a little bit different this year, too, sneaking up on us a little bit earlier than typical. Definitely. In the years past, you know, we've stuck to uh, January and February mainly with conference games. We're going to shake things up a little bit to, uh, to put it in wrestling terms. We're going to spotlight a couple area tournaments. We're going to start with the Southern Bank Classic uh, in Brooklyn, who is basically will be opening a brand new facility. Uh, November 17th and 18th, we'll be live at Brooklyn for days two and three of the Southern Bank Classic. And then early December, I believe the first and the second, uh, we're going to jump over and for the first time ever. We're going to, going to host games at uh, the Barry Pruitt Hurricane Classic. So I had to make sure I got that name right. <laughs> well, um, and I guess we're going to be the premiere of Brooklyn's new uh, It appears arena. that way. I think I think they've got a red-white game scheduled ahead of us. But as far as uh, other teams coming in, mm. pretty sure that's going to be the first, uh, the first big grand opening, unveiling, whatever you want to call it, for the new facility there in Brooklyn. Can't wait. So big basketball schedule coming up. If you'd like to be a sponsor, give us a call, email us. Any way you can contact us through social media. However, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, big thing. So not only if you're a sponsor of TubeTown, not only are you going to be live on cable, replays on cable, you're going to be on, we'll probably just start going Facebook Live. Right. We'll go the Facebook Live route. You'll be live on Facebook and 
on YouTube as well. All right. of our games will be housed and archived on YouTube regardless. So, so many different outlets to get your name out there uh, if you become a sponsor of Tube Town Sports. Yeah, just another outlet. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for everyone to watch, whether you're a Facebook guy. Maybe, maybe you're not a Facebook guy and you prefer YouTube. Uh, we're just trying to get everything out there to reach beyond our cable map and also, you know, include some new audiences. You know, with these tournaments, we've got schools from other parts of the state and some out-of-state teams coming in, so this will allow them an opportunity to watch as well. Absolutely. So, big game this Friday night. Great weather again. Again. Can't, can't, cannot, can't believe, cannot believe the luck we've had the last few years with the weather, so we'll take it. But big game in Brighton, Brighton, Tennessee, this week as Southwind comes to town. Both teams 4-1 and one in conference vying for a home playoff game. So uh, check it out, Facebook Live this week. Can't wait to see you. See you at the game. <laughs>